5 Personal Branding Tips to Help You Stand Out as an Influencer Becoming an influencer is increasingly difficult. With so many people trying to stand out on Instagram, you need to work harder than ever before in order to be noticeable and memorable. Keep listening and we'll explore 5 personal branding tips that can help you do just that. 1. Have a Mission Statement A mission statement is where any serious branding should begin. This is your statement of intent, and it's what you are pledging to do for your audience. A mission statement should this way outline not only the product you are going to sell, but also what sets you apart from the competition, and why you chose to start your business. This is your why, and it is what will help people to really get behind what you are doing as a movement. 2. Know your audience No brand should try to appeal to everyone. This is a very common mistake. Instead, you should aim to appeal to a specific type of person, which will be your buyer persona. This way, you'll be able to direct all your efforts to appealing that singular demographic, giving you a clear and consistent message that will set you apart. 3. Express yourself with your logo Your logo should express all this, as should your web design and the type of photos you take for your social accounts. In short, someone stumbling on your blog or your social page should immediately know if your brand is for them or not. 4. Be consistent Once you've found your groove and you have a message and an audience, the next crucial consideration is to ensure that you are consistently putting out high-quality content that will serve that mission and audience. This means consistency in terms of output, keep posting, but also in terms of your message. Make sure that you are constantly appealing to the same people with the same kind of content. 5. Live the dream Finally, remember that you are going to become an ambassador for the lifestyle you are preaching. You therefore need to embody the dream that you are selling, or the value proposition. If you post about relationships, then your Instagram should be filled with images of you and your partner doing things together. If you post about fitness, then you need to look healthy and happy. 5 Ways to Build Your Followers and Increase Your Influence Being a big influencer means being an online celebrity. It means having a platform and a brand that lets people follow what you have to say. And it means being able to generate huge amounts of traction for pretty much anything you post. You'll open up incredible new opportunities too. From being invited to give interviews to being approached to write books by big-name publishers. It's certainly a great thing to aspire to, but it can take time and effort to get to the top. If you're at the start of your journey now, then listen up. We're going to share 5 tips that will help you get to that end point all the faster. 1. Work with big influencers The best growth hack for influencers is to find other big influencers to work with. This way, you not only gain free exposure to their audience, but also endorsement from names that people in the niche already trust. This is massive. 2. Make a name in existing communities Another tip that is less well known is to make a name for yourself in other communities. No matter what niche you choose, there is most likely a forum somewhere filled with people who are fascinated by that topic. If you can find that forum, post extremely regularly, and demonstrate your generosity and broad knowledge, then people will trust you and want you to succeed. 3. Write a book I mentioned that becoming an influencer could lead to publishing deals, but this also works the other way around. If you have something to say, get an agent and seek out a publisher. A book will give you huge exposure and massive credibility. Just look at Tim Ferriss. 4. Get qualified Another strategy is to get qualified. That means becoming an expert in your chosen field, which will immediately mean that people take you more seriously. You'll find that people are more likely to listen to your advice and that other brands and creators are happy to endorse you and to recommend your advice. 5. Get media coverage Another excellent strategy for getting your name out there is to look for media coverage. You can do this by doing something noteworthy that the media would want to share with its readers. That can amount to publicity stunts, but it can also mean giving interviews to share your vision and mission. How to choose your niche as an influencer if you plan on becoming an influencer, then you first need to do some strategy and think carefully about how you're going to plan your attack. And you really should think carefully. 
That's because the decisions that you make now, before you first get started as an influencer, will do more to shape your future success or failure than anything you do subsequently. In particular, you need to think hard about your niche. In this presentation, I'll guide you through the process. The first and most important thing to consider when choosing your niche is whether it is something you know well and feel passionately about. It's tempting as a marketer to look at the current biggest niches and the ones that traditionally earn the money than to pick the one that appeals most to you from there. But this is a mistake. Firstly, it is a mistake because a lack of real passion for the topic will come across as you write and post. Moreover, it's a mistake because you won't have anything new and interesting to contribute. Think about it. Who reads fitness content? People who like fitness. That means they probably know a bit about fitness. And if you're providing the most generic, surface-level content imaginable, then they're going to go elsewhere. To be a thought leader, you need to lead. And that means you need to stick with what you know. That isn't to say you should shy away from niches with a large appeal. Of course, having a bigger potential audience is a good thing. So try to pick a subject that is universal, like sex, money, health, etc. The problem is that doing this can also leave you as a small fish in a massive pond. How will you compete with the huge health brands like Men's Health or the established money influencers like Pat Flynn from SmartPassiveIncome.com? The answer is try to be more specific and to hone in on the exact niche that really interests you and that speaks to your audience. This might mean something like health for seniors, for example, or making money online for students. Another option is to combine two popular niches in a unique and interesting way. Either way, doing this will shrink your audience, but also help you to engage much more strongly with that audience once you find them. How to find great topics to blog and post about as an influencer. If you want to be a successful influencer, then you need to provide value to your audience. To do that, you need to post regularly about topics that interest them and that provide some kind of value. This is easier said than done. How do you come up with great new ideas for blog posts or pictures with tips underneath or YouTube videos? How do you do this every day of the week for years and years to come without becoming derivative, dull, or repetitive? Here are some tips that can help. Write ideas down. You will have days when you are extremely inspired and days when you extremely are not. A key tip is to write down your best ideas as they come to you so that you can later read them back. Keep a wonder list or similar online list and update it continuously. Read. One of the most important ways to come up with new ideas is to read around the topic that you are operating in. That means reading books and established texts, but also reading the news and ideas from competitor sites. Let all that information jumble around inside your brain and then regurgitate it as something new. See what's trending. Often the most successful content is content that is trending or that in some way speaks to the zeitgeist in your niche. To find these kinds of ideas, you can use tools like BuzzSumo. This will show you the most popular posts in any given niche, which will in turn give you ideas for things to write about. You can even bounce off popular news posts with your own take or response. Another way to do this is look at Google Trends. Here you can see how search data changes over time in order to see what's increasingly on people's minds and what is not. Choose your niche well. The other crucial thing to do is to ensure that you choose your niche well to begin with. That means that you should know and love the topic you're working in, which will make it much easier to keep coming up with new ideas. Repost. When you're really stuck, don't be afraid to occasionally repost or recycle old content. You can do this by posting an old image on Instagram, Throwback Thursday, or by sharing older posts from your blog to social media again. How to get brand deals as an influencer. As an influencer, one of your biggest goals is to most likely to start getting brand deals. This is literally living the dream for many people, being paid to wear clothes or use products, sometimes thousands of dollars for a single post. You've created your platform. You've built the audience. You've gained their trust. Now, how do you land those great deals? Keep listening and you'll find out. The first thing to do is to make sure that you are putting out great content consistently with a clear target audience. That latter point is important because it's the target audience that is ultimately going to appeal to the advertisers. They must see that you're being consistent 
and that your followers are listening to you. At the same time, ensure it is obvious that you are open to suggestions from sponsors. You can put this right in your bio and in any other online profile. Simply state that you are open to sponsors and tell them how to contact you. LinkedIn is another particularly good place to do this. If you keep doing this, then as your numbers grow, you are highly likely to start getting inquiries and requests. But if that's not fast enough for you, then you need to get proactive. One way to do this is to reach out to the sponsors personally. Find a company that you have noticed is sponsoring other channels and that you would think would be a good fit for your own channel. Once you've done that, send them an email and explain your situation and that you would love to support them. Show that you believe passionately about what they are doing and that you have the followers and the engagement to help them out. Know how much you are worth. You can use a number of tools online to calculate this. Just don't make the mistake of accepting far less than you should. Be cautious of brands that are offering to pay on a commission-only basis. You are not a salesperson, and you don't want to dedicate all your time to promoting their platform or service. Finally, another option is to sign up for a number of online networks designed specifically to connect brands and creators. A good example is Grapevine. These will list your brand along with your stats, and brands will then be able to message you through the platform. How to work with the top influencers in your niche one of the very best ways to get yourself to the top of the heap as an influencer is to volunteer to work with other big influencers. Most niches have an established hierarchy of top creators. If you can be accepted by these names, then you'll find it leads to huge exposure for you early on, as well as key endorsements from people who matter in that circle. The only problem, as a small creator, messaging a massive YouTuber or Instagram star will normally result in no response. How do you get them to answer, and better yet, to work with you? Here's what you need to know. Start small. It's tempting to go after the guy or gal with 5 million subs, but keep in mind that they probably get 100,000 emails a day. Unless your name immediately jumps out at them in their inbox, then they're not going to be motivated to click on your email. So instead, start with the smaller creators. Start with the other micro-influencers that are currently in a similar position to you you'll both benefit by sharing your audience. And then each time you grow this way, you can take on a slightly bigger creator next time. Make yourself known. Don't just go straight for the kill with a message asking to collaborate. Instead, spend some time posting comments on their videos, liking their Instagram posts, and contributing to the discussion on their Facebook page. They'll see this, and you'll become known to them, such that when you email, they'll be far more likely to look. Message more than once. It's very important not to pester a big creator, as you can very quickly get blocked and ruin your reputation before you even get started. But just because they didn't answer you right away, that doesn't mean you shouldn't try again. Wait a while, then politely ask if they got your last message. Remember, these guys are very busy and get a lot of messages. They might have fully intended to message you back, but became snowed under. Give them another chance. Network in person. The very best way to get creators to give you the time of day is to meet them in person, where you can make a much bigger impact much faster. Attend networking events and make sure to hone in on the people you want to work with. Monetization tips for influencers. Becoming an influencer opens up huge doors. If you have a large audience of people who are hanging on your every word, then you have the potential to galvanize that audience into a massive customer base. The problem is that many influencers have no idea how to do this. In this presentation, we'll change all that. Did you know that with 200,000 followers on Instagram, you can charge an average of $1,000 for a sponsored post? That means posting an image where you are wearing a particular item of clothing or consuming a supplement. It's an extremely easy way to make a lot of money that takes just five minutes. Now imagine how much you could earn if you had millions of followers. This truly is a cash cow, but there are a few caveats. Firstly, if you don't have millions of followers, then you might mistakenly believe that there is no way to sell sponsored posts like this. As you have already probably guessed that is incorrect, you can actually make a lot of money as what is known as a micro-influencer, as long as you have the engagement. The key is to become more proactive in going out there and finding those advertisers. To do this, you can either try messaging them directly or using sites like Grapevine, which connects advertisers to creators. 
Either way, the key is to actively go out there and look for sponsors. But it gets better. Because think about it. If someone is willing to pay $1,000 for you to post an image wearing their shoes, what does that tell you? It tells you that they are earning far more than that in order for this to be a profitable move for them. And what that tells you in turn is that you can also earn much more than that by doing precisely the same thing. Not selling shoes necessarily, but selling something else such as an ebook, or better yet, a course, private coaching, etc. As an influencer, you are what people are interested in. And if you can offer your knowledge and your one on one interaction, then you can conceivably charge thousands of dollars. And a single post can generate multiple sales. Now, there is a way to go about selling a product and a way to design one so that people will buy it. But all you need to know is that this is your ticket to making big money as a creator. The secret to becoming an influencer is by delivering value. Want to be a massive influencer? Want to be able to command huge paydays just by posting images of yourself using someone else's product? Want to build a massive tribe that hangs off your every word? It's something that only a select few have managed to accomplish. So what's their big secret? I'm going to share it with you. Are you ready? The big secret to becoming an influencer is delivering value. That's it. There's no magic formula, no crazy growth hack, and no secret strategy. The simple truth of becoming a massive influencer is to offer value day in and day out. But what does that mean? Delivering value, of course, means that you're giving away something useful. That might mean entertainment. It might mean amusement. It might mean information. It might even just be inspiration. But ultimately, when someone interacts with your brand or your content, they need to come away feeling as though they gained something from it. Why? Because, of course, that is then what's going to motivate them to come back again in the future. You probably already understand this intuitively. Chances are that you're posting pictures regularly or that you're posting blog content regularly. Maybe you make regular YouTube videos. But now ask yourself, are you really providing value? Because where many people go wrong is by thinking that any content is going to be automatically valuable. You see this with Instagram accounts that simply share lots of other posts using a certain hashtag. You see it with YouTubers who spend ages talking about themselves before getting to the point. And you see it with blogs that post extremely generic and uninteresting content that bring nothing new to the table, probably because they hired a writer to do it who knew nothing about the topic. That is not value, or at least it is not much value. And so people don't follow. In order to provide value, you need to create content that leaves the person feeling something powerful, something memorable. The question you should always ask yourself then is, would you read it? Would you be excited by the title? Would you share it? And if the answers to those questions are no, then don't post it. Go away and find a way to make it better. Then try again. You must always deliver exceptional value. Understanding the three C's for influencers. Want to become a huge influencer? To earn money just by posting pictures wearing free clothes? To have the power to command the opinions of a great audience? To open up incredible opportunities you hadn't even dared dream of? It's all possible, and in fact, it's very simple, once you know how. One easy way to remember just how simple this is, is to grasp the concept of the three C's. And that's precisely what we'll be discussing in this presentation. Here they are. Content. If you want to build a following and become an influencer, then the number one thing you need to focus on is content. That means you need to create amazing blog posts, videos, podcasts, Instagram images, or whatever else. The point is, is that this is what people are going to follow you for. If you don't have great content, then you'll find that people don't come back. How do you define great content? Simple. It must provide value to the viewer. This can be value in the form of entertainment, information, or motivation. But whatever the case, it must offer value. The next C4 influencers to learn is community. Of course, this is referring to the community that you build around your brand and the people who follow your content. Creating a thriving community is one of the most powerful things you can do as an influencer. Not only does this give you the chance to speak directly with your followers, but it also gives them more reason to keep checking back and to stay engaged with your brand. They've made friends, and they're taking part in discussions. Communities are also what make a brand feel more like a movement, rather than just a cynical business. Our final C is connection. 
This, of course, means connecting with other influencers and gaining the kind of prestige and influence that comes from that. Once you enter any new niche, you will find there is an established community of top creators, people who reside over that niche and who provide most of the content. If you can ingratiate yourself with that crowd, then you will not only gain free exposure, but you'll also gain the endorsement of people who your audience already trust. And this can make a huge difference to your overall status and impact. Time to introduce yourself. Which social media platforms should you build your influence on? If you want to become an influencer, then you need to build yourself an audience and connect with people that share similar interests to you. Sounds simple, right? Except that it's something that thousands of people want to accomplish and only a few actually manage. So where do you start? The first step, of course, is to choose the platform you want to build your influence on. Are you going to be the next big Instagram celebrity? Or do you want to become a YouTuber? These are both examples of places you can build influence, but they are extremely different in the way that they work. Let's start out by taking a look at the options and then define how to best choose from those. Here are the best options for influencers. Run a blog. Blog on other platforms like Medium.com or Quora.com. Post to Instagram. Create YouTube content. Create a Facebook page. Create a Twitter account. Post to Snapchat. Use Vine. Use Twitch. Use Tumblr. Of all these options, I highly recommend one of the following three for most influencers. Instagram, YouTube, personal, self-hosted blog. While you can build social influence on any of the platforms mentioned, those three will lend themselves best to the process. That's because they allow you to post in a more personal manner, using your own name, and in a way that is highly discoverable for strangers. If you try to create an influence with a Facebook page, for example, then people won't know to find you unless they actively look or see your post shared by a friend. Twitter is also great for letting people to get to know you in this manner, but it doesn't allow you to post large amounts of content, limiting your influence. Don't get it mistaken. You should be on all these platforms ideally, and they all have benefits. But you should also focus on one main one, and that should be one of those three. Which one of the three should you pick? Well, that comes down to a few factors. Firstly, you should pick the platform that is best fit for your kind of content you want to create. Great at photography? Then Instagram is a good pick. Prefer writing? Go for a blog. You should also consider your target audience and where they are likely to spend time. Look at the demographics of each platform, along with the kind of content that typically goes there. Ultimately, the right answer is the one that you feel most comfortable posting to for years to come. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.